In this first worked example in this video, let's consider the simple uh, overall objective subjective knowledge variable that we have measured in our craft beer data set. I know quite a bit about craft beer. And specifically, we're going to focus on reporting this as a two box score. First, the original variable was captured on a score of one, two, three, four, and five, representing the different responses on the Likert scale. But if we want to report it as a two box score, we're going to have to make a new column that codes these as zeros and one. That's for you to do and set up now. I don't show that in this video because we covered that issue in previous videos. Once you've prepared the Excel data set for that type of analysis, I can refer back to the previous cheat sheet that I had, and I can see that my job is to report the mode or the percent frequency for each of the categories. So to follow along, as I said earlier, we made a two box score. We, I placed it in the P column of my data set, and you can place it anywhere as long as you make sure your analysis is done on that particular column. And my goal here is eventually to create a table that looks like this. If I make a two box variable in the P column, these are the exact functions I will use. I'll illustrate this in Excel on the next uh, part of the video. I wanna point out that I had a reporting decision that I had to make here. Now, I didn't go out of my way and explicitly report the mode. If you recall, the mode is the statistical value that is most commonly occurring in my data set for a particular variable. I didn't report the mode here because the mode is actually readily obvious and available. Strongly disagree, disagree, and neither agree. Those, that group is 60.9%. That's the mode, right? That's the most common of these two types of values. So by reporting my frequencies, I also reported the mode. And by bolding it, as I did here in this table, it made it clear that that was the most common value to highlight it to my reader. Okay, so my very first step to create my summary table here is I need to, in column P, or wherever, I need to make a two box score for my subjective knowledge overall variable. I've done uh, this uh, before in a previous video. I'm going to use the VLOOKUP approach that we showed. So I'm going to accelerate the video here while I do this in this video. So here we go. And OK, I use the VLOOKUP. I now have a pattern of zeros and ones representing the two box score version so I can proceed on to my analysis. So what I wanna do here is I'm going to make a little place where my table's gonna go. Uh, I'll, I'm gonna use the similar labeling as what's shown in the presentation part. Notice here I used slightly different labeling, but the essence is exactly the same. And I do just a little window dressing here to make it look nice. So I select the bar maker tool up here to insert upper and lower bars. And to make it really nice, I'm going to colorize this whole thing as white. All right, so now there's none of those uh, light gray lines hiding behind. Okay, now we're ready to go. And my goal here is I want the percent of people who uh, agreed and strongly agreed. So we're gonna use those count if functions that we've used in previous videos. And we simply just do a count if function here equals count if, and I select my range. So that's all of these scores here. And I want them to count if, and a comma, right, type in up here. My criteria is count if one, right? So now that they're a two box score, I coded them as zero, one. So a one means strong, agree or strongly agree. So count those. Let's just click that in and confirm that it's working for now. Of course, I don't want the raw count. I actually want the percentage. So if I go back up into my function here, now I could type in 230 because I know that's the total sample size, but just in case the sample size changes, like I add some more rows or something, which is not gonna be the case, but it's good practice to have active functions. I'll use just a simple count function, just count everything up. And this time I'll type it in rather than selecting it. 
because I can see right up here what I need to do. I'll say count P2 to P231. And that's going to just count up all of the valid values, which will in fact be 230. And when I hit return, I get the value here. I can change the formatting to percentage and add a decimal. So it looks as 39.1. Now, the easiest way for me to do the next function is actually kind of a little mini hack here. I don't want to drag the function. I want to grab the exact same thing I have up here. So I'll just select it all and copy it. And then I'll double click down into the new place where I want the function and I'll paste it because I want it to do all the exact same things. The only difference is I don't want it to count the ones. I want it to count the zeros, right? Remember zeros are people who strongly disagree, disagree, or neither agree nor disagree. So if I switch that up, everything else stays the same. I hit return. And again, I got to do a little window dressing here, change it to percentage adjustment. And I could bold this so it looks nice. Highlight that it's the mode, right? Kind of flag this to a manager looking at it. And for the total count, you know what? I'm going to just go ahead and borrow that a piece of the function that I've been working off of, right? Because I want it to look like it's 230. I'm not going to just type it in manually. I want to use a function if I can. And I'm going to edit that function that I pasted in so that it only is the bottom part, just equals the count. And that will solve to 230. Ta-da! Great. Now that we've completed the setup and analysis in Excel, it's time to report the values beyond just the simple table. Now, basic reporting might look something like this. The survey asked individuals how much they agreed with the idea that they knew a lot about craft beer. As seen in table blank, 39.1% agreed or strongly agreed with that statement, while the majority of respondents, 60.9%, either disagreed or neither agreed nor disagreed. Now that's a slightly more wordy version. It's not incorrect, but that's the more expanded version we might report on this. A more compact version, if we're trying to keep it very tight or we're later in our report where we believe our reader has a clear understanding of how we're going about our reporting and analysis, we might simply say 39.1% of respondents agreed that they knew a lot about craft beer. Of course, that simple compact sentence presumes they understand what we're measuring, what we're up to and what we're doing. So this is the uh, the kind of version we use once we understand that through previous work in our reporting or our presentation, uh, the reader can follow along with what we are endeavoring to do.